Welcome to our worship today. We're now in March, the Ides of March, but spring is coming, isn't it? We saw our first newborn lamb the other day on our walk and what a joy that is to just watch them wobbling about on their legs and obviously the spring sunshine. Though they say we might be in for a cold snap. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. We're still waiting. We're still wondering, we're still watching the figures going up or down. But we're living now in some hope of resurrection and new life. And today um, we are thinking about Jesus in the temple and Jesus upturning those tables. And it got me to thinking about what we maybe have to upturn in order to move forward following this time that we've spent in in retreat actually so hope you enjoy our worship i hope you can find something in it for you but also find that challenge where you're asked to serve god Good morning. Today, as we continue our Lenten journey, we have had more symbols to our display. A jug of water. Water is an essential element in our lives. We need it to live. And we're going to plant a begonia tuber. Putting it in the soil won't be enough. You'll need to give it some water. And not just today, but we'll need to water it regularly in order that it will grow into a strong flowering plant. Let us pray. The woman at the well was faced with the real meaning of her life. Her failure was accepted and God worked with her failure. When we are faced with our own truths, may we not be crushed or lose hope but rather realise our need of you and celebrate the gift of forgiveness and new life that you give. Thank you, Lord, for your life-giving spirit. Let us never tire of the daily journey to the well, of dealing with the daily realities and needs of life, of living and working every day with the same people. Rather than looking for the big things or wait for others to change, may we start to look at the world with fresh eyes and begin to open our own hearts to new beginnings and ways of relating. Thank you, Lord, for your life-giving spirit. Amen.
to worship. Through the creation of the universe, you love us, Lord. Through guidance, call and commandment, you love us, Lord. Through the gift of your son, Jesus, you love us, Lord. Through our worship and our response to your word, we love you lord we come now to our readings for today john 2 13 to 22 jesus cleanses the temple the passover of the jews was near and jesus went up to jerusalem in the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers 
and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Let's picture the scene that we're about to enter. It's one of two accounts, this at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. The second account was later documented in other places, but happened three years later. The scene at the temple. A busy day and the sun bearing down. Jesus had walked a long way on a dark and arid landscape, the sun bearing down. When he arrived at the temple, there were lots of people bustling around. Excited chatter, a festival was approaching. People were getting ready for parties and celebration. Jesus, on a mission, had just spent time with his family following the first miracle where we're told his glory was revealed. He turned water into wine at the request of his mum. Jesus had not been overwilling, but he did it. And no doubt there had been incredulity and anticipation Amongst his family, Jesus was already set apart. Perhaps Jesus had wanted to get away to reflect on what had happened. Perhaps he was seeking solace in the temple. Perhaps he just wanted to get away to be with God in a holy place. I wonder... Where is your holy place? Where do you find solace? Where do you best have dialogue with God? How do you feel when your plans are thwarted? When you can't find a space to be? How do you react? Can you identify with Jesus on this day? Righteous anger has he entered the temple and saw what was happening there. What do you make of those who don't treat your holy space with respect? I wonder, did Jesus learn from his outburst? Did he learn something about himself in that moment? Was there another way he could have made his point without upturning tables? I wonder. As Jesus looks at us in our places, what would he demand that we remove? Jesus referred to his body being the holy temple. What do we need to rid ourselves of? What is it that Jesus is saying to you right now? We know in hindsight, Jesus was preparing his disciples, setting the scene 
for all that was to come. In fact, that they might believe. Is the scene being set for today as we revisit this story? What might we be being prepared for? What needs to change? How can God reshape our holy places? What does this even mean? Where are the places that God is waiting to make holy? Which places are potential holy marketplaces? Can we in identify the signs of what God is doing? Amidst the money changers, the sellers, the people, What is God doing? Where is he taking us next? The reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Christ, the power and wisdom of God. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. And so we come to our message for today. I've kind of given it a little header which is speak or not to speak, obey the rules or not, making our temples holy. Gosh, I don't know what you make of that. Um, but let's just have a think a little bit about what the readings tell us this week. If we go to that Corinthians reading, Paul was writing the letter to the people at Corinth at a time when there were many problems and people were struggling with these problems in the Corinthian church. Rather than skirt around the issues at play, Paul cuts to the chase and turns their attention back to Christ. That seems a familiar theme, doesn't it? That's what's been happening all the way through Lent. We've been turned back to that centrality of Jesus in our faith and of course being Paul we are turned with well we're our attention is pointed towards the cross and as we are on our journey to Easter that's so right we're looking to the cross of Good Friday The message of the cross is one that jars with everyone when heard and reflected upon for the first time. It's cruel and everything else that goes with it. For a Jewish audience, it was considered to be foolish because the Messiah wasn't supposed to die. 
for the Greek idea of body re resurrection was mm, didn't fit and even now the message of the cross in 2021 seems very foolish to a lot of people being humble offering of grace through faith is not seen to be um, kosher and we often think about jumping hoops which is foolish to some the cross of Christ and the love of God are not aimed solely at the wise man the scholar the philosopher but actually to all who accept Jesus as their saviour in our reading from John we are taken to the temple we've already been there in this service today but I just want to speak a little bit more about the actions because the actions of Jesus were an attempt to point the world, to point us to the truth. What is important? All the things that Jesus cast aside in that temple can be metaphors to represent the things that we may be need to cast aside. Things that are getting in the way of the message of Jesus. Things that are getting in the way of our relationship with Christ the message of the cross the barriers of the temple were broken by Jesus that day flung across the floor worship was being used to promote dishonest trade it was involved with money changers and merchants and Jesus's decision that day was to point the world back to the centre of what temple life should actually be about. That brewed that righteous anger within him, didn't it? We also learn that the temple being alluded to Jesus's body and God's son, Jesus was standing in that place and yet what was happening all around him the people were far more, more concerned with the buying and the selling and that precious building and you know what that's still there today the various different people who have bits of that temple they're not really interested in the real message they're interested in the power the right the status all of those things so it seems that we are being challenged this week to think about the use of our church buildings personally how we use our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit and it's not about the wisdom of the wise once again we're brought back to that core of faith Jesus's dramatic actions challenging the authority of the religious institution and that is so pertinent I think to our contemporary church what is church where is church happening do we equate our religious institutions with the presence of God or something else how are we challenging our current practices to ensure that God is given the chance to reveal himself. Jesus did it by upturning tables. Now that's a huge challenge. Which tables are you going to upturn? What are you going to cast aside? That's something to think on deeply this week we're going to just bring all that together in singing a new song let's fill this house it's called you are calling us 
So we're gathered here. We may be gathered in our different places, but this gathering is, we're doing it together. Today our prayers take the form of an action prayer. You might like to join in with your whole body. Some people pray in a temple or a church. Some people kneel or bow to pray. Some people take off their shoes. 
Some wash their hands and their feet. Some people sit. Some people put their hands together. Some close their eyes. Thank you, God, for making our whole bodies a living temple and for loving us in the noise of the temple. In the noise of the temple, Jesus made a holy place. In the pushing and the shoving, Jesus made a holy place. In the busy times at work, at school, Jesus made a holy place. In the bustle of our homes, Jesus makes a holy place. In the quiet of our hearts, Lord Jesus, make a holy place now. Make us holy as we tread the earth. Make us holy as we encounter the lives of others. And make us holy as we are challenged to live your shalom. Amen.
as we leave this place, we turn to you. As we leave today, we turn over to a new beginning. As we walk in faith, may we live as you call us, holy people, living temples. We go in Jesus' name. Amen.